Okay, it started with, uh, I walked into the library in Bloomington, Indiana, where I lived, and there was a book by Frederick and Matthews Green, Facing East, and it looked interesting, and I read it and loved it. I was practicing Roman Catholicism at the time, but I read all of her books, and I just kept thinking, there's something here I haven't seen before. So I looked to see if there was a, an Orthodox church in town, and there was. It was Antiochian Orthodox, and I went, and I was captured. I was still in and out of Catholicism a bit, and then when Chris and I got married, we did um, Latin Mass Roman Catholicism. Okay. But we'd never really agreed totally with the doctrine, and that began to grate on us, and we just thought, maybe there's some place that that teaches something that we really feel like our hearts are at home with. Right. So um, we had read a number of books about orthodoxy when we first got married, but then it just kind of faded away. Right. And then when we got ready to move back to Georgia a year ago, I got online and I found St. Innocent. And I listened to all the videos and I thought, these people have something in this place and it's it's a community experience it's an experience of God that they're describing that I had never experienced and I thought I don't know what that is but I want some of it I love liturgy and so this was beautiful I love the icons um, everything about it just felt perfect so yeah I don't I'm perfect you're, you're wearing a pendant um... Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, this is my Maria. This is St. Maria Skoltsova, and I met her 14 years ago as well. Chris and I had gone to Paris for our anniversary, and I was obsessed with all things Parisian. So I was online one day, and it, she just came up, St. Maria of Paris, and I thought, who's that? So I dug into it, and I found out who she was. And that in orthodoxy, just being divorced doesn't mean you can't be a saint. Right. Maria had been many things. She had been a, a refugee from uh, the Russian Revolution. She had been very politically active because she thought that was the way to help people. And ultimately, she she was divorced. Had you know, she'd had three children. She buried one, and that was the thing that really put her back to her church roots in Russian Orthodoxy. And so she and her husband were released from their vows and became religious. So they, yeah, they hid Jews in their house in Paris and she wrote the most beautiful thing that just goes like a diamond bullet to my heart. She said, if we were true Christians, we would all wear the star. The age of confessors has arrived. And she met that with courage, and when the Gestapo came and got them, she treated Ravensbrook the way she had treated her monastery as a holy place. She sewed icons when she was in Ravensbrook. And she was such an she had such an exemplary life, but she's such an accessible woman as a woman. So I'm I'm so charmed and enchanted by her. And she helps me so much every day when I'm just having simple problems of um, self-pity, worry, worship of mammon, whatever, you know. I just grab this and remember her and remember the way she lived and that when the rubber met the road, she did the godly thing, not just the right thing, the godly thing. I was raised Roman Catholic. I was disillusioned with the American Catholic Church. I didn't go to church for 20 some years, 25, maybe even 30 years. But then, now that I'm Orthodox, the power of the Holy Spirit, when we were in Indianapolis, we went to a Latin Mass, Latin Roman Catholic, Catholic Mass. And then we said, oh, this is beautiful. Um, doesn't fit me perfectly, but you know what? I don't think there is a better fit. Than the Catholic faith. So we did that. And we stayed with that for about five years. Now, when we decided to move to Georgia, 
since we were still in that mold of Latin. We said, well, we have to find one. We couldn't find a house within two hours of it. <laughs> so, we were talking, and it's probably the Holy Spirit again. <laughs> and he said, let's try the Orthodox. And it's interesting on my journey, because of the Orthodox Church I have, No disagreements, you know, dogmatically, theologically. So I, I'm home now. It's been a journey. Yeah. Yesterday was an eventful day. Yeah. Gary talked about, you know, transfiguration. You know, the um, theophany the, on the hill. And... I was thinking about that pretty seriously, and then I got an article not two hours later about the Holy Spirit and, and theosis. I read that, and ever since then, I'm sort of like, hmm. Hmm. Because in the Catholic Church, God's over there. God's not here. God's over there. He's accessible, but God's over there. God's not imminent in the world, which I'm like, hmm. So now I'm just like, hmm. And it's a change in my life because the Holy Spirit is in me. I just have to be responsive. That's all I have to do. If we pray and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, will help me experience God. You talk about the Desert Fathers, or you talk about the Hezekast. Either, either way, through prayer and contemplation, you will experience God. I think I've had hints of that in my life. Hints. I've had hints, but I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I've had hints before, but I didn't know what it was. Now I know, so I'm... Thank God. Thank God, yes. Yeah. Chris uh, is saintly. He is, I, I, and I'm not kidding, he really is becoming saintly <laughs> in this process. I'm not kidding, and he prays so much more than I ever heard. I was, um, I used to have this self-righteousness about how I'm the spiritual one. Uh, no. We were accustomed to more intellectual tradition and orthodoxy is more experiential. And this community in particular is like that, the way that we've been taken in and um, just loved. Oh, yeah, like... And happier. I think we're both happier. Mm -hmm. We really are, just from the beginning of this spiritual practice. And we weren't going into it to be happier. We were going into it to be Christian without mm. thinking that was going to get us any place in particular. So it's been a really pleasant surprise. Mm. 